Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So unfortunately, again, we do not have Dr. Anita Madan Behel with us today due to medical reasons, but in her place, I am absolutely delighted to welcome onto our podcast, the beautiful and very amazing Garima Surana. Garima is one of the shining stars of today's social media world. She is the host for a fabulous podcast called Popcast. It's a pop culture podcast. And um, she tells me that it's a um, pandemic baby. So she started it in March. And Garima, I'm amazed that you've already reached 200K subscribers and listeners, which is absolutely amazing. But even beyond that, um, Garima is an entrepreneur and she's just started, some, she's trying to launch something called the Podcash platform, which is where she plans to connect investors with creative um, work. And this is not just amazing because of course it's big money, but I think what's really fabulous about this Grima is that the amount of channels that you're going to open up for people out there who don't know how to connect with investors. So I'm absolutely delighted to have you with us today. Welcome. Thank you for that flattering introduction. I'm honestly um, exhilarated to be here. I have spoken to you for my podcast before. It's about it'll you know release in some time but Seema you're you're such a storehouse of wisdom energy knowledge and I told you this before but I'm just going to repeat it on your channel that you know if I'm your age and if if I'm not even half as poised as you are it's it's just not worth it so thank you for having me here you're so kind thank you so okay this is another fabulous mutual admiration society <laughs> um, platform and I love that so, Garima, as you know, that this platform was created to respond to a lot of people who are writing in to us about all sorts of issues and problems. And we try as far as possible to address a lot of these things that come in. And I know that you have also committed to trying to destroy taboos and stereotypes and so on with your podcast. Yeah. So today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to touch on the subject of sexting and phone sex, more actually about sexting, because over the pandemic, this has suddenly taken on huge dimensions. I mean, it's just suddenly blown up. Everybody's indulging in it. And I find that over this time, the vocabulary has changed. And because of the vocabulary changing, suddenly certain behaviors have become totally acceptable because there's a word for them now. Yeah. I think uh, it's very interesting, especially in the pandemic, you know, because a lot of couples, a lot of partners were away from each other and the basic emojis that we once uh, knew, for example, if, if, it's a, if it's water droplets, we once knew them as, you know, it was representation of sweat or, or teary eyes or something. And it's clearly now being indicated to something which is um, synonymous to a woman's orgasm. Um, similarly, there are so many emoticons like a peach, which is again, synonymous to your ass. And it, it does help in sexting and, you know, fighting that taboo. But um, I think it's the whole meaning has completely changed for sure. Yeah, I just found out about the water droplets two weeks ago. <laughs> and I was horrified. I was told by my daughter and some of her friends that you can't use this anymore because yeah. it means uh, it means to come. But you mean that it's only for a woman's um, orgasm or it's for both orgasms? I think it is representative of a woman's orgasm. It's also, so, um, I think it also represents squirting. So, I mean, essentially, oh. like I said, it means, um, it means uh, you know, it's either if somebody's sweating or if somebody's teary eyed. But if you place that teary emoticon with something like a peach ass or, you know, with that cool thing, um, the cool black specs, then it means that, you know, you're probably either getting kinky or you're hinting towards something which might mean that, hey, I'm ready. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm glad you told me that because I was getting really harassed by the fact that suddenly I can't use water droplets anymore. But okay, so there is a little um, extra. Disclaimer now. Yes, okay, sure. there's a disclaimer. <laughs> and yeah. then I was told you can't use aubergine anymore. Yeah. And I was thinking, Okay, it's like it's getting out of control. 
But yeah. tell me something. Okay, so uh, the other day I was, um, so, you know, we are starting a podcast of stories and I was talking about ghosts. Okay. And then this whole idea of ghosting came up. And once again, I was like, oh my God, do I have to just learn the English language all over all again? Over again. <laughs> yes. You know, it's a task even for us millennials because the internet teaches you so many things. Uh, you know, every day there's a new definition which is coined. Every day you're you're probably, you know, learning something new. So ghosting, of course. Would you like to tell people what ghosting is though if they do not know? I think you're going to explain ghosting to them. Okay. So ghosting is essentially um, when you withdraw communication or any form of contact with your partner or your friend without giving them a disclaimer. So if you stop your communication at any given point, um, uh, it's, it's technically termed as ghosting. But again, because, you know, like I was telling you, ghosting is, of course, that I think most millennials and, uh, you know, people on the Internet are now familiar with. But I was reading about something very interesting, which is called soft ghosting. Oh, yeah. And soft, soft ghosting. yeah. And soft ghosting essentially means that um, I will completely not stop replying to you. So I will just like your pictures or like your messages, but I will never respond back. So it's a slow, soft ghosting process. It just does not happen that, you know, one day I suddenly don't reply to you. It's like, I'm there, I will show my presence, but it's soft, you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, tell me something. I mean, this is actually, to me, this particular thing, it, yeah. it's just an example of what I was saying earlier, that certain behaviors have become so acceptable suddenly. So now, because we have a word for this, we call it ghosting. For, for the longest time, we've said, this is a bad thing, people shouldn't do it. We've, we've tried to say to men and women both that you know, if you're, if you're seeing somebody, give them an explanation. Communication is good. Yeah. And now suddenly ghosting is like, it's the norm. It's like, yeah, we all do it. Yeah. In fact, um, so ghosting is, of course, the process of, uh, you know, ghosting somebody. But a ghost buster, just to educate everybody, a ghost buster is essentially a person who will continue to text and call, uh, even though they have, they've been ghosted by the other person. And I think I'm guilty of doing this, even if I was being ghosted by somebody for whatever reason. Um, it, of course, takes a toll on your mental health. And then you are the ghost buster because you're trying to you're trying to not go into this guilt trip where you want to blame yourself, um, whereas it's absolutely the other person who's ghosted you, you know. So, you know, with all the internet knowledge now sinking in, of course, you're much more aware. I think our parents' generation, um, or even a decade back, I myself didn't know what is ghosting or if I'm being ghosted. So yeah, I think there's so much to learn from the internet also, actually. And I guess there's so much more pressure on just being a person in a relationship today. Because, you know, when people say to me, okay, um, how can we use social media? Can it be used to actually make our relationship stronger, better, more exciting? And I have lots of different types of advice that I give them where I say, you know, open yourself up in text messages. You can actually flirt so much better because you're not face to face. It's such a great platform yeah. for building relationships or for flirting or for really having fun if you if that's what you want to do. But I guess you can't do that today unless you've learned a whole different language yeah it, it becomes difficult I think uh, when you said that communication is the key 100% but I think for our generation proactive communication becomes something very very important because um, I mean we have to take that initiative to keep the spark alive in any relationship you know you have to proactively communicate if, if your partner is probably passive then you have to proactively uh, you know ignite the conversation or the fire or the charm and so the whole idea is of course communication is important but if you proactively try to keep the charm alive uh, which you have to consciously do um, you know in order to keep everything good and sparkling but I think proactive communication is something very very important which our generation especially needs to learn. You know, um, so a lot of youngsters that I speak to, they feel like when they're telling me these words and I am clueless, 
about a lot of them. Okay. And they get really, so it's generally a joke, right? So we, we, we laugh over it and I'm like, okay, this means this. But I have to tell you that, you know, this is not a new thing. The Kama yeah. Sutra, which was written 2000 years ago, says that all lovers should have a secret form of communication. So there should be all sorts of emojis and objects and things that should be passed back and forth to express an idea. Because when you put everything into solid words and big sentences, it kind of kills it. Yeah. So you have to do some of it through just little objects and little things. So this idea is as old as the hills. Yeah. I mean, did you know that um, it was literally everything? So you could use things from the kitchen. It's okay. a haldi. Haldi. You could send haldi to somebody to say that I love you. In, you could in COVID times, if you send haldi to somebody, then it's another <laughs> meaning altogether. What does it mean now? What does it mean now? No, I mean, just because, you know, haldi is something which, which is antiseptic and it, it sort of treats you. And, you know, I'll, my mother has been telling me, you know, just do haldi water gargle and just take a pinch of haldi every day in your diet. So, yeah. I, I so, hope it's not antiseptic, what you're hinting at. No, it's not. It was literally a case of, you could send um, elaichi in a pod, you could send um, badam separately. So all these things had their own language. But I think my favorite thing that I would have used if I was to make a whole set of emojis from yeah. that time was the different types of scratches for your nails. So if you were very high sexual energy, mm -hmm. you would shape your nails in three separate points like a saw. If you were medium wow. sexual energy, it would be one point like a parrot's beak. And if you were low sexual energy, okay. your nails would be shaped flat. <laughs> okay, we oh. all, <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, okay, the, the fashion is now that we shape them flat, but yeah. you know, I always say that if, yeah, yeah, me, to them me, flat. Too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Yeah, okay. but it's okay but we don't say that this is low sexual energy now but I always say to people that you know if you want to send your partner like a, a come on message yeah. when you get a manicure done send them a photo of your manicure yeah. and let that be a little sign to say I'm thinking of you I'm excited you know like this is I'm actually thinking of you in those terms because right. it's just such a great um, communication point so I understand that there are lots of different ways of communicating and different types of ways of passing messages. But, okay, I'll tell you what, before we go any further, I can tell you a couple of these that the Kama Sutra used. Give me a few really weird ones that you've come across, which I know I probably wouldn't have heard of. What, the, 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 the new language? The, yeah. I mean, I used one where I was like, I started dating in high school. So um, I would never say I love you if I would be around, you know, with my mom or my parents or I mean, any relative, basically. So I had a um, I had a Nepali friend from school and I asked her, how do you say I love you in Nepali? And she told me it's more similar something like that I'm sorry if there's any Nepalese who's watching this but uh, yeah so she told me like this and you know and then I figured out this unique way of saying I love you even though I would be around with somebody so I would be like this is like back where I was in 11th standard another thing that I would do is uh, you know if my partner would always end the conversation with something very cheesy or romantic or you know maybe crossing the boundary and again if I was around with somebody my code language was pretty simple I would write no etc etc dot so it means you're not supposed to say anything uh, you know vulgar so to say so no etc would be my code that okay you have to now you know we have to draw the line now that's amazing I love that yeah. And see, I love the fact that you, aside from the fact that you um, set a code of behaviors, but the fact that you were strong enough to be able to say that, I think that's really fantastic. Yeah. So codes, I guess, can work in so many different Both ways. ways. I think. I think one of Sorry. the things about being sexually intimate with somebody is that you know, you share 50-50 um, uh, amount of, um, how do I say it? 
um, you share that power to be yourself and respect your set of rules that you have set for yourself and to be able to give um you know the other person also the power of consent it's very very important and for any sexual relationship consent and condoms both are very very important <laughs> so Absolutely. yeah vitamin c consent and condoms the three main c's oh yes <laughs> <laughs> extremely important so tell me has there have there been any specific words or emoticons that have come up to sort of give women a little bit of agency just some power in their hands to to defend themselves to protect themselves or to move forward um emoticons per se um, or even words like i said you know specific words that get used even in sexting or Yes 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 i think uh, one of the words that i recently learned uh, was called stealthing and i think every woman should know about it and i just mentioned condom it's actually got to do with condom so stealthing is it's just to put it very simply stealthing is a process when your man removes his condom in the middle of the act um slyly so that you know you uh, so you are not aware about it and i think um, it's a practice that most men get indulged into it's of course not healthy um and you should have communication active so um stealthing is something that is 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 a word that you should be you know knowing you should know the process and if your man ever ever does it please tell him not to um um something else that so we all know what is one night stand um a half night stand is something again that i <laughs> but i happened to i was speaking to somebody and i got to know about this whole new phenomena of half night stand um and as the word suggests so in a one night stand typically you um after you finish your business you will end up uh, staying over at your partner's house but in a half night stand you finish the business and you come back to your house you come back to your bed so there is no obligation or if you just you know if it's just there for sex then you come back to your own place so it depends how you want to take it um um something else uh, that i also recently discovered was um cloaking oh uh, yes cl- so cloaking is when a person stands you up for a date but then also blocks you on all the dating apps that you've been before so it's sort of like ghosting but he also stands you up on the date so it's like five times more yeah probably yes so there's like a whole new bunch of millennial dating definitions something again one of my friends here um so they have this very weird phenomena of only dating during the winters and then breaking up in the summer oh we just call it that also yeah we just okay. call why why the cuffing season is again i mean if you just you know you just want the warmth of somebody during winters um just because you know you want a cushion to yourself or you want to be warm and cuddly and comfortable and as soon as the spring hits in or the summer sets in you are like you know you go your way and my way is probably highway so <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> cuffing season is also pretty i i mean of course there are you know relationship like you correctly said seema that it's just beyond these words and it's it's actually we keep saying that you know our parents generation had a love so pure but i think now also like of course there is scope but with all these new um mechanisms having a term coined for itself is just it just becomes like a, a tedious process to fall into love you know you don't know where do you want to bucket yourself into yeah like i said you know suddenly with having been given these very cool acceptable names um it almost seems as though those things are becoming acceptable i mean we say this when we're trying to break stereotypes that yeah. you know we we don't use words for the vagina we never say the word vagina we don't say the word penis we don't use certain words and we disenfranchise people by not saying it but similarly when you say the certain words i guess you give permission for that to become okay 
And I'm just, um, I'm amazed. So there are actually people who will do only winter relationships and then bye-bye for summer. Yeah, bye-bye for summer, maybe somebody else. And then you are, you know, uh, or, or, or there are people, there are legit people. And I know of these people, like I said, this friend of mine, um, so for them, they, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a setup, you know, and both of them are okay with it. They want themselves to be together, um, during winters. And then as soon as summer sets in, they want a break, not that they will go and date somebody else, but they want a break to just sort of breathe in, uh, that they now know more with somebody and they can be by themselves. It's pretty weird though. I mean, so I'm still old school. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm definitely old school. But I was just thinking that how do you, how does the person on the receiving end deal with this? Because whatever we might say, um, when you're in a relationship, I think that we are most vulnerable. You know, that's when you feel the most amount of insecurity. We've all been stood up at some point. We've all been turned down. We, I used to be, uh, there was this guy in my life years ago, and I was besotted with him I was like you know ugh, it was just amazing and, and I I discovered eventually that he was in love with somebody else and I can't tell you what it did to me it just broke me so I was just there as somebody that you know he would be friends with and yeah I was good company to have but he was actually in love with somebody else there was no word for these things in those days I just they remember have they, now. they have a relationship sorry what situationship which is when you're, when you're swinging between being friends with somebody or figuring out if you are actually in a relationship with them so when you are literally on the highway of friendship and relationship it's situationship okay well i was situationship yeah <laughs> but yours you know, was a situationship Okay, I, mine was a situation shift, but yeah. you know, I still remember what it made me feel like. It just made me feel awful. Yeah. And you know, it's just, it kind of destroys you on the inside. So what are the terms there that you can go to for empowerment? Like, I mean, is there like almost words which are like one word advisory words which you know okay you have been aired or ghosted or yeah i don't know cloaked or whatever hmm. is there like okay do this ah uh, i'm not too sure about more empowering words because all of them you know go down the gutter and they just are there to tell you that these are the emotions that you know if somebody is not talking to you, then babe, you're being ghosted, right? So there the more terms I think to uh, indoctrinate you or to educate you when it comes to the other side of the relationship, but not more terms when it comes to empowerment. And it's a very good uh, revelation right now. We need more terms to have for a healthy, uh, empowered, equal relationship, you know? Um, or even I, a healthy, empowered um place to go like okay we've now come to accept in our heads that there is a thing called ghosting and chances are very high that you will be ghosted because there are just so many people out there today who are on these apps and who are available yeah. so if you're ghosted babe this is what it is kind of like mm -hmm. okay I'm leaving this one with you you have to come up with a word Karima yes and I think everybody who is you know everybody who is watching us if you know of words that will empower you or if you know of any words on the other side of the spectrum please put down in the comments and educate us also so that we just don't know about ghosting and we know about better things as well absolutely if you had to come up with a word what would it be i'm just trying to think if you come up with something i want you to tell me as well mm -hmm. it might be something that the podcast coins now Oh, wow! I You've come up with such some amazing words. And I have to tell all our um, audiences out there that Garima has me absolutely floored with some of the incredible language, the, the words that she uses. And one of my favorites was the fault with our Rahuls. From oh, Rahul. my God. <laughs> I love it. Please, can you tell everybody about that? That is just so cool. Yeah. So, of course, it's a wordplay. And I love doing wordplays. Um, one of the other word plays that we do is um, to break the stereotypes. We call it break this three O types because essentially most of the stereotypes are for women. 
So we break it down into three O types. So that's that's one. But coming back to the fault in our Rahul, so it of course stems from the fault in our stars, but it also comes from the fact that you know the pop culture products, Bollywood movies, and especially dharma productions, you know, has ruined young girls' lives and dreams, and you know what they perceive of love and romance to be in their definition. So these boys, mostly called Rahul, portrayed by Shah Rukh Khan in our movies. were these you know chocolate boys who would be like super macho but trashy macho men and you know even though they would be chocolate looking but the they would be problematic and it's only now that we realize that they were problematic because in our childhood we all laughed to those movies and probably we still would be laughing but we understand the layers of patriarchy that you know it has or we we now probably understand the deeper level of meaning so a rahul and kuch kuch hota hai now we know is problematic the, the way he treated anjali or the way he said oh tu to tomboy hai tujhe kaun sa ladka pasand karega no i mean if you are a tomboy and if this is how you desire to be then good for you but you know who the hell gives rahul to to talk to you like that it it took rahul like literally a daughter a dead wife and i think a decade of time to realize her, his true love so clearly he's a fuck boy um what's a fuck boy oh a fuck boy that's oh, a fuck boy sorry but you said fuck boy okay yeah no, no fuck boy <laughs> ask any girl these days what's a fuck boy and they will know for sure yeah. because no even i know that one so oh yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, me and I know that one. Um okay, so tell me something. You know, um this idea of sexting which like I said suddenly has become so big. I've been getting emails from people from men and women mm-hmm. saying my partner, my wife, whatever during this time has been sexting somebody else, particularly partners, boyfriends, girlfriends. they have been you know he's been cheating on me she's been cheating on me she's been talking to other boys he's been talking to other women now in the past in our old mythology yeah. the woman's purity had to be so intense that in her brain if she ever looked at another man if she ever thought of another man that was it her purity was finished then we come to this point um which i've been trying to fish out certain texts and things which say that there are three types of sin there's the sin that happens in your mind where you just think about something which is the smallest sin you can say certain prayers and it's finished then there is the sin of words where you say certain things and once you said them you can say certain prayers give so much dan and it's finished and then finally the sin of action where you act on something and you do this and you do that and you can clean that you can basically clean that up now what do you think sexting comes under I me mean, you know it seems feels like a very harmless sort yeah. of thing it's a bit of fantasy but it's being perceived as something so powerful and solid not yeah. just like words on a phone that people are seeing it as sinful they're feeling that it's against the idea of monogamy and they're being hurt by it yeah uh so what you just described is is actually there, there is a there is a term for it it's oh, called okay. <laughs> it's called micro cheating and um, i think guilty guilty as charged <laughs> okay um so micro cheating is essentially just for anybody who doesn't know is if you are with somebody and if you still happen you know we're all human beings and you don't walk with your eyes shut right and to anybody who harps the flag of you know being monogamous and you know it takes pride in it great good for you but there are dozen and you know thousands and i don't know how many women out there or or men out there who might just want to challenge the concept of monogamy and uh, micro cheating can be a slippery slope i mean like you said what may start as a harmless um text conversation or as a you know flirtatious message you you don't even know when does it realize into you know something much more than that and the whole concept can be 
pretty pretty ugly actually so for us and i have always wondered about this one thing that what where do you actually draw the line you know um for for concepts like infidelity i mean of course if you're going out of a relationship if you're having sex with another person then that's clearly a demarcation that you are cheating with somebody but subliminally if you are in the act of um, you know making love to somebody and if you still think about somebody else that how would they be in bed with me right now or if if you are probably you know having um if if you're having a moment with your partner but you're still on phone with another person sharing the same moment it it is it is it it just becomes very very ugly i think and for you to have that understanding of what you want from life can be a very difficult question because you're clearly enjoying the physical part of one relationship by physical i don't mean the the sexual act i mean the the physical presence of your partner but you also want at the other hand to be on the phone with somebody who might just you might just be lured to you know so i mean i want you to give us and educate us more on where to draw the line because us millennials are clearly um jumping around the fence so to say and we do not have much understanding what does karma sutra tell you about cheating though so the interestingly the karma sutra doesn't actually talk about cheating in the way that we see it because it doesn't define anything you know it's great because it says that all these emotions are so fluid you can feel this way today and this way tomorrow so there is no such thing as ke ye hai to this is what it will be it's always in yeah it's, it's always it's always in, in yeah. yeah so it's very fluid but the idea that you could be thinking of somebody else is very natural if not every day certainly every now and then fantasy is a very healthy part of keeping any relationship going because everybody needs some kind of variety and we always say okay you need to try different types of fantasies different things for variety rather than actually physically stepping out of a relationship yeah but to me you know this the idea that you might go and flirt with somebody like you said it can start very harmlessly and it's yeah. always a bit of fun but if you're going to do that i think a lot of people think always that it'll be fun and then before they know it it's out of control yeah and so if you are ever going to do that you're going to flirt you can have a little flirtatious conversation you must become aware that it needs to stop after the first or two conversations you can't take it further because the moment you do it will get out of your own control yes of course so yeah so that conscious awareness has to come from your own mind of where this conversation is leading to if you're still doing it purposefully um because you want it to end in a certain way but then be aware of what you're trying to do here because the only person who might end up getting hurt in this process is you yourself you because yourself. yeah because you will always have that guilt trapped in you um of cheating your partner not just not just that there will always come a sticky end to i mean yeah. any relationship not all but yeah. 95% of the time that relationship will come to a sticky end and it involves pain and so we in ourselves need to understand what we're doing um, what we're doing to ourselves it's very hard though when you're young and mm-hmm. this is starting and we all feel invincible okay but in me i'm doing this i can stop any time i want yeah i mean i can't even stop eating a slice of chocolate cake when i want to <laughs> so certainly if i start to flirt with somebody you know it gives you such a high it makes you so excited it, it, you know you've heard the cheat thrills i think i always just uh, put myself into this this song that it'll just give me cheat thrills when i do this i don't really know uh, how long will that you know feeling even stay of being attracted to somebody for all you know it might just be and i think for most people because i grew up in delhi i think for most of us we just find a man looking hot and then the minute he opens his mouth and we're like sorry yeah. uh, i'm wrong <laughs> yeah a lot of them should just keep quiet yeah it's a shit show then it's actually a shit show <laughs> so tell me something um this in in sexting language yeah 
is there something to actually draw boundaries? Are there like, okay, this far and no, like you said, you had this no, etc. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think there have been more emoticons to encourage sexting than block sexting. So there's another uh, emoticon, which is, I think, newly introduced. It's, it's the cancer sign, but it's like an inverted 69. Um, so that also means, um, of course, uh, being in the position or you're asking your partner to be. There's another one, which if you, if you use the doggy emoticon, but with something kinky again, so it's it it's not your pet then for sure. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that is there. Uh, but I think going back to your topic of cheating, one you know, if I can just be vulnerable here and share my experience, when when I came when I had this moment you know in my life where I was in a serious committed relationship with my partner, but for. I mean, for some time I was sort of attracted to this another man. I think when people say, or, you know, even when experts like you say communication is the key, we don't really take it to our head. But I think I was, I learned it, I think from the very, I, I learned it from the very start of it. And I, the first thing that I did was actually communicate to my partner. Very honestly, without any inhibition, I mustered up the courage. I walked up to him and I said, there's this man I'm attracted to. I really love you, but I cannot stop the attraction. And it's, it's you know, I don't really know many women who, who muster up that courage to speak to their partner and figure out a way of going about this. Because in my head, I was very, very sure that, you know, my relationship with you is much more important than any tiny fetish or any kink in my head, you know? So I think um, having that communication, proactively reaching out to your partner whenever something is wrong is the key if you really are 100% confident about your relationship. Otherwise, the world is, you know, full of men and women and kinks and fantasies and one comes and other goes and it's a vicious circle. Uh, you can choose to sorry for putting it very loosely, but you can choose to, you know, whore around or you can just choose to be monogamous. That's completely, and nothing is wrong in either. I mean, even if you're whoring around, there's absolutely, as long as you're safe, of course. Um, yeah, it's a choice that, that you make. Yeah. yeah, it's a choice that absolutely you make. And, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any judgment on that for sure. Unfortunately, the reality is totally different. And we judge, even if we don't think that something is going on, the first thing to do is to judge. But I love what you said about the communication bit, because like I said, to me, I think that nothing actually builds a relationship quite like communication does. You cannot swap it for anything. And funnily enough, the Kamsutra again says, uh, at one point, it says that if your wife, so it's, it was written for men, as, as I think I've mentioned before, because back in the fourth century, when the Kama Sutra was written, women weren't taught how to read or write. So the books were written for men. So it says that if your wife actually goes off and is with somebody else or gets attracted to somebody else, don't treat it like a mortal sin, because it can happen. So you know, we all understand that we get hurt, we get upset, but it is not something that should end your life or end your relationship. And it goes on to say that just, just like you might do it and you would expect her to respond with a certain amount of calm and understanding, you must do the same for her as well. And I think that couples who can actually come to that understanding um, are amazing but that has to come from inner self-esteem it has to come from within you yeah. to say that it's okay I still have people writing to me and saying that uh, my wife who they've been married now two three years before we got married had other relationships and I'm finding that very hard to accept and there was this one man who wrote and I, I understand his hurt but I just think that at some point, you know, you've been with this girl now. He said, it was an arranged marriage as well. And I feel that she let me down. And I was thinking, you know, you, you cannot say that just because it was an arranged marriage, 
that automatically you presume that somebody would be a virgin or and if it means yeah. that much to you like anvita says communicate ask them you ask people are you vegetarian or not yeah when you meet them yeah you know so um But so this you know, i actually again um, i have a friend who hasn't kissed or made out or um, you know gone any explored anything about um, uh being in a sexual encounter with somebody only because and he's a great friend of ours only because he wants his woman to be pure and oh, okay. all of our friends have you know together made him understand so much that what you're looking for is something very hard one and second for you to have that kind of you know a mental um understanding that you will that your woman has to be pure just because she's virgin uh, and that's your definition and that's your standard of measuring any woman basis of purity is absolutely trashy you know and we've tried to really teach him hard he's he's now in australia and i don't know what what he's up to now and what's his new life like but while he was in delhi he was this one man who would who would always stick to the fact that if i ever make out with somebody that woman has to be with me for the first time and i have to touch her for the first time and there are enough and more people like him you know who who will have these misconstrued things and uh, their own definition of some bullshit theory that they've made up in their mind garima that's been a really fascinating uh, conversation and for me particularly it's been really enlightening because now i knew i know more words and i know that there are certain things that if i was to enter the millennial world there are certain things that i can do without being judged as well because it's part of the norm now the behavior yeah yeah but i think i i mean i don't even i don't know if it's good or bad but yes <laughs> but before we actually sign off there's a couple of things that i'd like to finish with one is that if you are going to give any advice around the language of sexting and the behaviors of sexting to women what would your advice be i think i enjoy as much as you can if there's a if there's an emoticon make use of it express yourself don't feel shy to you know express yourself via that emoticon but having said that be aware of the predators around you know if you are sending your nudes out to somebody make sure that you trust the person enough make sure that you know there is an understanding and if at all you you are sending nudes you know there are ways that you don't have to show your face necessarily or depends on the level of comfort that you are with that person so i think there's nothing harm in sexting i think all for sexting and especially pandemic um you know sexting has been such a rescue for couples who are either in long distance or or are away so all for sexting having said that just be very very cautious when you do it internet can be a mad place um, and you do not want to risk yourself so enjoy exploit explore a lot of what you can um it's absolutely all right to explore your own sexuality and if an emoticon you know can help you and can aid you to to tell the person that you're about to come then great i mean amazing <laughs> um so yeah you know um that reminds me of uh, so but i think this is 17th century or 16th century britain there is um there's in the history of britain there is this woman who was actually the head of a particular family and she was a lesbian and in those days of course in britain it was completely unacceptable but because she's so powerful you know she's the head of her family she's rich she's kept these diaries and she did have her lesbian relationships and in her diary as she writes very graphically what she's done and then in the margin she would put an exclamation mark and that meant that she'd come that was her orgasm so you know it's just so lovely because you can actually read these very graphic diaries with an yeah. exclamation marks and okay i've come now so like i said it's been around for a long long time amazing so, I, i really wish her diary would be full with orgasms because most women and we were having this conversation on our podcast on my, on my podcast that most women don't end up having orgasms because any you know women who are like in their mid 20s mid 30s and mid 40s and who would still not with their kids actually you know who who made babies but still wouldn't orgasm because 
it's it, it's such a taboo to even speak the word out forget about the whole biology to how a woman orgasms absolutely i always say that sex is not the taboo subject actually pleasure is the taboo subject yeah. you can talk about sex you can get coarse you can get crude talk about pleasure and that's it you're an, you're a bad person <laughs> but um also just as a point you were saying that um you know the, the idea of the nudes and how actually dangerous it can be on the internet and i agree totally are aren't there any emoticons that you can send as nudies as opposed to yourself um you do send that bikini um you know emoticon uh, if 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 at all you want to represent but that never suffices because um if you are you know into like full power sex thing and if you are uh, in the act of it completely then it, the bikini picture does not uh, you know it doesn't suffice okay it does not suffice so yeah but i think i mean i i've personally never been com- comfortable with the concept of nudes so i honestly don't don't remember maybe once or twice but i don't remember being very comfortable with nudes particularly it's it's a personal choice i mean i don't myself i'm not comfortable but if you are um comfortable still be very conscious of the fact that you you trust the person enough to leak out your private pictures to them great that's really good advice um and if you had to give a little bit of advice on sexting to the men to the boys particularly and i'm specifying over here the younger boys because those are the people who are really coming into this this is um you know the older teens um yeah. who are really relying on this because a lot of them who been writing in and saying that they got low self esteem they've never actually been with a woman they've tried it doesn't work oh my god what should i do what is your advice to them i think for young boys particularly it's very important that uh you seek consent from your woman and it's very important for you to adapt this concept of consent if you write uh rather than just saying i want to do this to you no if you really want to do something ask her would it be okay if i do something you know i how about i do this are you comfortable if i dot 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 you know it just makes your woman feel so much more wanted it makes her feel so much more secure it makes her feel that you're so much sensitive and understanding to her emotions so i think consent is extremely sexy and if put in the right way if you know you can arouse your woman like this nothing like it so don't be shy of asking her and don't be in the impression that um i have to look hyper male and you know uh, this macho man uh and it will just shatter my machoism if i ask her for something no i think she will feel much much better and she will respect and appreciate you more if you ask her for it yeah i think also i'd like young men to know going on from there which is brilliant advice that a lot of times what men or boys think of amongst each other is not mm. necessarily what the woman is actually looking for so if your relationship is with another man then by all means get the advice of another man if your relationship is with another woman get the advice from her on what she would like to be treated as yeah or how she would like to be treated yeah. rather than seeing what your peer group has to say i yeah. think that's really very really good advice and the last one um uh, is that what has also come out of this pandemic is that somehow suddenly a lot of older women and younger men are now sexting each other yeah. so they're not necessarily in physical relationships but there is this kind of sexual relationship based around phone sex and sexting going on um what is your advice for older women because like is there something that sh- they should know about sexting i mean um uh... because let's face it this is a whole band of people who don't necessarily know the language who don't necessarily know what are the rules around all this so is there something that you can advise them i think one way simple thing and that implies to everybody if you are not aware of any concept if you can still be naive and embrace that and be comfortable that 
hey, I, I, I'm not too sure if this is the right thing that I'm doing, but, you know, I'm sending you these water droplets because I'm almost there, you know, or, or something. It just makes the other person feel so much, you know, that this person is, um, there's this such a trust that comes into the place and it just becomes such a wonderful conversation if you embrace yourself and if you're not shy to admit that you might not know this, but clearly I have, you know, much more wisdom and much more, I mean, I've been there, done that babe, like so many times, maybe more than you, or I have, you know, so much more experience than you, but for older women or older men, I think um, they might just sometimes feel that, you know, uh, what if the Gen Z or millennial, uh, you know, people might think about me, but I think, let that go you, you know what what counts is the, the personality the way you speak the the way what your thought process is that's much more important than that those five minutes of you know a, an act that's coming out there so it's okay to be vulnerable and express out yourself out there Rima, thank you so much for your time you know i really enjoyed our conversation i know i've learned a lot and I think your advice on all levels has been amazing. And I hope that the women listening to us, the girls listening to us, do actually hear what you said, that, you know, go out and explore your sexuality, own it, take it over, love yourself, but be extremely careful, protect yourself. And to the young boys that you go out there and take consent, even even behind the shield of the internet, behind the shield of the phone. Get your consent because that's what makes you a more desirable lover. People never understand the difference between a, a great lover and a desirable lover. There I is no even sense when you're sending lover. your, even I think when you're sending your dick pics to women while sexting, I think ask for it, you know? Don't just blatantly send out a dark looking aubergine, <laughs> You know, it's not the best thing we want to see, trust me. And personally, like if somebody sends that to me, like I would not be even hot. I mean, that's nowhere clo close to me being horny if I look at your thing, you know. It does not do what you expect me to react after this. Like I'm probably freaking out. So, so ask for it maybe before sending if I'm in that, you know, mental space also to embrace it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And I think another point that you made earlier that... Um, don't look at this as cheating. I know that we have a word for it. It's called micro cheating, um, but it's not necessarily something that should destroy a relationship. So you have to be extremely careful. Take responsibility for what you're doing and yeah. be careful with it. Always be careful with it. 100%. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything that I left out that you would like to add just before we go? Um, I think what's, the, you know, the only one thing we've given advice to young women, young men, older men and older women, I think only one set of people are left out here in terms of advice, and which is our parents. I think if there's any parent who's watching this, and if you ever find your children being sexually curious, or, uh, you know, what if you ever find them um, sexting, or if you find, if you ever find anything sexual related to, uh, you know, any, anything sexual where your kids are indulged into, please make a safe space for them. Do not shame them for being curious about it. Um, it's very, very important as a parent that you teach your kids about the safe space. You tell, you educate them about the concept of pedophiles. You tell them, um, you know, about predators that there are bad people out there and it's okay for you to be curious your hormones are kicking in or whatever but i think it's very very important to not shame your kids at all or beat them up or you know do anything bizarre to them because that will be their first understanding of um anything that is around sex you know if you instill that fear and shame in them that's how they're going to be so it's very important for you to really be great parents and uh, be great to your kids about it actually extremely good advice I think a yeah. lot of people could actually do with that and I hope I hope that parents do take this on board because remember you were young once so 
I have had an amazingly wonderful time listening to Karima. Karima, thank you so much. I hope that everybody out there, when you listen in, you find it as useful and fascinating as I have. As always on the video, do like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, send them in to info.seema.anand at gmail.com. And if you wish to get in touch with Garima, she is at podcast with Garima, podcast spelled P-O-P-K-A-S-T, podcast with Garima on Instagram and podcast with Garima at gmail.com on email if you want to write to her. So thank you for having me. I think I had such a ball and honestly, I learned so much more than, you know, that I could add value to you. I hope your listeners had a fun time and uh, I'm, I'm hoping and waiting that our episode on my podcast comes out soon and uh, I wish you all the best for this podcast. Thank you, Karima. And bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>